Hi everyone and welcome back to ASSC Chemistry. So this is the first of a series of moles videos and I'm taking you through a past exam question from OCRA. First thing about this question, uh, we are told that the teacher who performs the practical at the top, and it is in the context of a teacher, which is quite unusual uh, for an exam question, and we're told that they have heated, um, and this was in the intro as well as the first part of part two of this section of the question. I can also tell you as well that this second question down here, although I've actually cut it off, this is actually worth three marks. So we can refer to that when we're going through our numbers very shortly. Now, to begin with, we're asked what other type of reaction takes place, having been told that it is a redox reaction. The other type of reaction is quite obviously and clearly, um, if you think about heat and you think about there being only one reactant, and you think about two over here, this has got to be a thermal decomposition. So this has got to be a thermal decomposition. We don't know anything else about the chemistry, but we don't really need to, to spot that that is a thermal decomposition because you've been told it's heat, you can see there's only one reactant, those are your giveaways. Now, taking us down to the moles part of this question, we can see that it says the teacher heats 0.824 grams of KClO3. Now, first of all, then, that's going to be our mass value, so we're going to use that. Calculate the volume of oxygen produced in centimetres cubed measured at room temperature and pressure. Now, this is really interesting, actually, because they want it in centimetres cubed and they want it to the nearest whole number. So that third and final mark, which is actually going to be a combination of those two accuracy points, um, is going to be really, really important. So we know the precision, we know everything else, let's get started. To begin with then, we're going to start with our equation at the top. We're going to start over here on the left-hand side. So we're going to start over here with the KClO3. What we're going to do then, once we've got the moles of that, is take ourselves over to this side using the mole ratio, using the stoichiometry of the equation, which is just um, a scientific term for the balancing, using these big coefficient numbers, like the 2, 2, and 3. And we're going to land on this side to find that volume. And we're going to do it in three easy steps. Now, the first step, then, is going to be we need something in this equation to have a mole value. And as I identified early on, I'm going to use the moles of the KClO3. If I had information for the amount of KCl that had been produced, or if they were generous enough uh, to tell me how many moles of O2 were produced in the reaction, I could have started with those. But I don't have enough information for either of those two things. So what I need to start off with is the KClO3. And the clue was I was given a mass for that. So my first calculation here, really, really simple to get us started, and I'll do it in the red again down here so you can see what I'm doing. I need to know the MR of the KClO3 because there's only ever one calculation using moles and mass in chemistry A level, and it's uh, mass equals moles times MR. So we're going to rearrange that today to get moles equals mass divided by MR. So we're going to do moles equals the mass that we're given by the question divided by the MR of our particular material. Now that's the KClO3. Don't use the two coefficient inside this MR calculation and that's going to give us a calculation of 0.824 divided by 122.6. And that gives us a mole value at this point which is equal to, it's quite a small mole value and you can write this in standard form if you want but I'm going to show it uh, written out in full. And so we've got 0.00672. So that's our mole value at the moment of the KClO3. Now, to get across to how many moles of O2 that would produce, I now need to use the ratio. So I didn't use that 2 in front of the KClO3 before, and now I'm going to involve it with the 3 that's in front of the O2. Now, when we're moving from the 2 to the 3, that's not an obvious change. It's not an obvious transition. So what we could do is we could bring it down to 1 and then go back up to 3. So what I'm going to suggest we do is we take the moles of the KClO3 and we're going to divide that by 2. And then we're going to times that by 3. Now, mathematicians amongst you, you could just times by 3 over 2, so you could times by that fraction. But for those of you who uh, want to try and keep it as simple as possible, we can just divide by 2 and times by 3 to travel through this ratio. And what that means is our moles of O2, which is where we are now, the moles of O2 that would be produced, is equal to 0.0101. Now that I've got the moles of O2, I can very easily find this missing volume, do my final step. 
So the final step for this calculation is going to be to do moles times 24,000 to give me the volume of O2 that is actually produced. Now I'm going to use 24,000 because the question has asked me, remember, to give it in centimeters cubed. If I just times by 24, which is the molar gas uh, volume that's given on your data sheet in the OCRA exams, then I actually get an answer in decimeters cubed, and I would have to take that number and times it by 1,000 anyway. So I'm just going to use times 24,000 just to try and speed things up a little bit. So I'm going to take this value here at the bottom to show you which value I'm using. So I'm using this value here. And I'm going to times this value by 24,000. Now I'm running out of space a little bit here, but the final answer then, I'm going to show it just a little bit further up. My final answer for this is going to be 242 centimeters cubed. So there's my final answer. Now you must make sure that your answer is given to this nearest whole number, this was the only answer they actually accepted. There were a couple of marks if you didn't use the ratio uh, that were potential for this one, but really everyone is capable of doing this. I would expect you're working out as well if you were trying to do this to um, impress an examiner. You would show it in the lines that I've done here, but then of course your final answer, which I've had to chuck up at the top, this should be in the bottom right hand corner because you would have an answer space to put that. So can you please always make sure you put the answer there? Now, the main reason I want you to do that, more than anything else in the world, is because if we just have a quick look at the mark scheme, there we go, and just to remind you, this was taken from the question itself, um, what we can actually see is, just here, first check on the answer line, if answer equals 242 centimetres cubed, award three marks. Now, if you're an examiner, all you need to do is look at that, check the line, give them the three marks. So you must make sure that you play the game a little and put your final answer on that dotted line in the correct units. Always double check your units with calculations. I hope that clears up some um, approach you might have to moles questions and gives you an impression of how we can notice details in exam questions. I'll leave you to the rest of a playlist. Happy revising.